Welcome to the year 2022. Things are getting better, you know. Crypto markets are collapsing, GPUs are now readily available, and prices are even below MSRP. The world is pretty much resuming from this pandemic, and I am recovering from COVID. It also means that products are being re refreshed. <laughs> and one of these small form factor systems that I looked at last year and I quite liked got refreshed with some new parts. And yes, I am of course referring to this MSI bad boy, the Trident AS12TG. MSI also sent me their flagship monitor to look at this massive boy right here, the Optics MPG 321UR-QD, and it's really quite an impressive monitor. So let's see how it performs and where, well, and what changes MSI has for the uh, Trident AS in 2022 with a review of both of them. So. The monitor doesn't come bundled with the uh, desktop, but you shouldn't have expected it to either because it is MSI's flagship model after all. But this time around, this PC also doesn't come bundled with a free, you know, cheaper 1080p monitor, which is really sad to see, although it does still come with the standard keyboard and mouse. The keyboard's not here, but you get the uh, Clutch GM11 and the Vigor GK30, uh, yeah. It also somewhat maintains its 8,300 ringgit price point or about 1,900 US dollars. So definitely not really for those looking for a budget machine, but there's also a fair amount of upgrades that have been done under the hood. It trades out the 11th gen CPU for a new and if you've been paying attention to the reviews, super fast Intel Elder Lake uh, 12700F, I should know my personal rig uses this exact same processor. You still get a single stick of 16GB DDR4 RAM, except that it's been upgraded from 2,666 mega transfers per second to 3,200 mega transfers per second. The, uh, you know, not bad, pretty good Western Digital SSD has been replaced with a blisteringly fast Samsung PM9A1, and that RTX 3060 has been swapped out for MSI's RTX 3060 Ti Ventus. One of the more interesting changes is the motherboard because this time around, it's actually changed to a custom non-retail part, the B660 MSB924, and I feel that the reason behind to this has a lot to do with the power supply. You see, this year MSI swapped out the 450 watt 80 plus uh, bronze SFX PSU for a much beefier and better 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply, again made by FSP. But what makes it really special is that this is the world's first SFX 12VO power supply. Yep, you've probably heard of ATX 12VO, Intel's new PSU standard, and this is the SFX version of that. And what makes uh, ATX 12VO and of course SFX 12VO interesting is that it's as the name says, 12 volt only, so it doesn't have any additional rails and conversion components for 5 volts and 3.3 volts. This helps increase the efficiency, especially at lower wattage scenarios, like when you're just idling or surfing, but it also comes with a catch in that it doesn't use the large 24-pin motherboard cable that we're all used to anymore, which, you know, it's, I guess it's great for uh, SFX builds, but as you can imagine, the new 10-pin connector needs a motherboard that supports this standard, so I can understand why the board is kinda non-standard as it's still pretty new and bleeding edge. The chassis is the same one as used in the previous generation, so if you're interested to know more about that, you can always check out my previous video of the Trident AS11TG as my opinions on that still apply to this. Uh, long story short, it's a pretty cool looking case and uh, using the glass side panel instead of the steel panel actually nets you better thermal performance aside from looking better. This time, the out-of-the-box experience was flawless. It is Windows 11, but I experienced no issues whatsoever, and you get the same bundled software and stuff that you did last time. Yes, including Norton. And again, you can check out my previous video for more details. 
The Samsung PM981 in the AS12TG honestly runs circles around the WD530 in uh, last year's model, getting about 5,388 megabytes per second read and 3,233 megabytes per second writes, making it more than twice as fast for reads and more than 66% faster for writes. This time around, the BIOS is a lot more bare bones, possibly because it's not a retail part, uh, so you don't get the ability to lift the voltage limits here. But of course, Intel's XTU exists, and it had no problem lifting the 65 watt long term power limit that was set in place. You can set it to unlimited, and that is what I did, but in reality, you're only going to hit about 175 watt of uh, power consumption before the system will start to thermal throttle. Unsurprisingly, of course, it is an SFF machine after all. In Cinebench R23, to no one's surprise, running an unlimited power target causes the CPU to thermal throttle. <laughs> but hey, at least I managed to score a pretty hardy score of 21,105, which honestly isn't really that far off from the near 22,000 that my full sized desktop scored. So I was honestly pretty impressed with it. It did, however, score noticeably lower in single core. I'm not really sure why. But maybe it's something to do with Norton? Maybe? In a 10 run average, the AS12TG completed the Blender benchmarks ever so slightly slower than my personal system, which is honestly pretty impressive, though for whatever reason, it was noticeably slower in the junk shop render test. In the Cinebench R23 throttle test, yes, as I mentioned earlier, the system does thermal throttle, but it really doesn't throttle all that much versus a properly cooled system coming in at about 5 to 10 watts lower in the end, which honestly isn't really too bad at all. A machine like this though isn't really designed for those kinds of workloads as I recorded up to 105 degrees Celsius on the MOSFETs and VRMs during this time. so. If you don't need the power, it's best to keep the 65 watt long term power limit in place or, you know, just go easy on the wattages. After all, this kind of system is designed more for gaming and so moving on to gaming in Horizon Zero Dawn 1080p max settings, it gets an average FPS of 94 with a 1% and 0.1% low of 62 and 45 FPS. CPU and GPU temperatures were perfectly fine as well at about 69 Celsius for both. Nice. Shadow of the Tomb Raider did quite well at max settings with 130 FPS average, a 1% low of 54 FPS, but you might want to ignore that 0.1% uh, lows because those are pretty much from the uh, scene changes in the benchmark dropping the FPS. Temperatures again were more than adequate at 73 for the CPU and about 69 for the GPU. Again, nice. Rainbow Six Extraction is a PvE spin off of the popular esports shooter, and indeed, in this game, the AS12 TG did quite well with an average FPS of 134, but for whatever reason, I found that the game stuttered quite a bit despite not having any load times, not that I could see anyway, evident with a 0.1% low of 22 FPS, uh, definitely quite noticeable. It's not a very CPU intensive game however with the CPU running at about 60 Celsius and the uh, GPU running again at about, you guessed it, 69. Borderlands 3 is new to my benchmark suite and we got an average FPS of 128, a 1% low of about 56 and again some noticeable stutter from time to time with a 0.1% low of 27 FPS. Just like Rainbow Six Extraction, the game isn't really very heavy on the CPU, running at a max of 58 Celsius, while well, this game definitely hit the GPU harder with the temperatures rising slightly higher to about 71.3 Celsius. Just like its predecessor, if you don't mess with the power limits like I did, then the machine is pretty much silent, but of course if you remove that limiter, well then expect things to get hot and heavy.
When I first took the machine apart, I thought that the 12VO power supply and the motherboard were the only surprises that the AS12TG had for me. But I was wrong because after taking off that CPU cooler, I found that it doesn't actually use full-sized desktop memory DIMMs, but rather laptop-style SODIMs. So yeah, I, I found that to be pretty cool. And also something very important for those of you who decide to get this machine, because, well, you'd have to get laptop RAM for it instead. I do wish that it at least got like, you know, tiny little heat sinks on the VRMs to help dissipate the heat on them however, because as they are, they're completely buck naked. Just like before, the easy upgrades that you can perform on this machine are things like changing out the GPU, adding in a new SSD on the uh, back of the motherboard, and adding in up to uh, two new 2.5 inch SSDs or hard drives and more complex upgrades are then things like replacing the CPU cooler, adding in more RAM, replacing the main SSD and of course replacing the motherboard and or power supply. I think that pretty much covers up things with the uh, Trident AS12TG so let me move on to this shiny big bad boy well yeah, instead, um, and it's not that little, the MSI Optics MPG321UR-QD, seriously a mouthful, and I'm going to first start off by saying that I'm by no means an expert at, uh, you know, reviewing monitors. There are really great reviewers out there who specialize in such a thing, like, you know, Tim from Hardware Unboxed, who did an excellent review on this monitor. That's it though, here are my thoughts and opinions. This is honestly one of the largest monitors that I've ever used. It's a 32-inch 4K 144Hz HDR600 IPS display with a 1 millisecond response time and is G-Sync compatible, but I think that the star of the show here is really that quantum dot display because it allows it to have a 99% accuracy of the Adobe RGB color space, 97% of the DCI P3 and 82% of Rec 2020 and it honestly shows because this monitor looks great with really nice deep blacks and colors. It obviously won't beat something like an OLED display for black levels, but to me it already honestly looks great. It also has a KVM switch built in, so you can use just one keyboard and mouse with up to three machines with this monitor. I think for someone like me though who is big on content creation and productivity and not so much to gaming, aside from the amazing colours and accuracy, I absolutely love the 4K resolution at this screen size because really, at this size, it's as good as four 16-inch 1080p laptop displays in a grid and it's been amazing for me as I could really multitask and work on this monitor without it feeling claustrophobic. Speaking of gaming though, the one thing that I didn't really find all that compelling was the HDR600 certification, as in games like Doom Eternal and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I really couldn't tell that much of a difference between the SDR and HDR modes, so maybe don't buy this monitor if HDR is important to you. Apart from that, the installation was easy although not toolless as you need two screws to secure the monitor onto the stand. You get a DisplayPort 1.4a port, two HDMI 2.1 ports and one USB Type-C port as video inputs and for the KVM, there are six USB 2.0 Type-A ports for outputs and three USB 2.0 Type-B ports for inputs uh, to plug into your machines. As for audio, a 3.5mm mic in jack, a 3.5mm headphone out jack, and a 3.5mm audio combo jack for your TRRS plugs. With all of those ports and potential cables though, I would have really loved to see some nice way to route and you know, maybe hide the cables, maybe in the stand. So let's talk about pricing because this monitor isn't cheap at all at about 5,400 ringgit or about 1,213 US dollars. Look, I'm not going to pretend that you can't find cheaper 4K monitors, but this monitor was never about being cheap or being you know, a budget-friendly monitor. 
this monitor was about getting one of the best 4K monitors on the market with little to no compromise because the majority of cheaper options out there, you know, making compromises like maybe they use a TN panel, maybe it's a, uh, you know, normal IPS panel with subpar colors and accuracy, maybe it's got a slow refresh rate with tons of smearing, yeah. You don't deal with any of that with this monitor. It's a larger 32 inches as well, which is larger than most of the 28 inches that I'm seeing out there. And I feel that 28 inches is just a little bit too small. Um, you know, it uses a uh, IPS panel with quantum dot technology, giving it really great and impressive colors and accuracy. And if you're someone who, whose you know, work like me needs that kind of accuracy, it is amazing. It's got 144 hertz. It's got a built-in KVM. So while the price of 5,400 ringgit is definitely steep, if I was in the market for the best productivity monitor that I could also use for gaming, you know, and it has really great colors and accuracy and, you know, refresh rates, no smearing, etc. This monitor would definitely be on my shortlist. Now, as for the Trident AS12TG, while I feel it's a good product and a machine that is pretty well made and pretty capable for gaming and whatnot, I do feel that its price of 8,300 ringgit is just a bit too steep, especially when we're coming out of a market where GPU prices were ludicrous and now parts can be had below MSRP. In fact, you can even get one of MSI's other desktops with an RTX 3070 inside for cheaper. To me, I feel that MSI should drop the prices to better reflect the current market conditions. And I don't know, maybe look at including a monitor as well in that bundle to sweeten the deal, you know? Right now though, I guess if you really like the looks and the size of the machine, and it is great, it's so tiny, and you know, you don't mind paying extra, then the Trident AS 12TG is definitely a pretty good buy. But if you're looking for something with better value, then yeah, there are other options out there. That's pretty much it for this video. I know I really haven't been posting for a while. Life as it is has been pretty much like a stack of dominoes, you know, where one thing falls and just so much other things start happening and until I lose track of time and the capability to do so much of these videos. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video at least. If you liked it, give it a like. If you found it useful, of course, share it. Comment down below on what you think about this machine and monitor. And if you like my videos, then maybe, well, maybe you would like me to uh, post more often. Let me know down in the comments below and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you. My name is Yang, the tech rodent. And I mean, with the cases as they are in Malaysia, I guess it was about time that I got the Rona, you know, myself, right? Uh, at least I held out for two and a half years, right? Good effort. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you guys around.